They say 90 some odd percent of traders lose money. Only a few actually make it. Well, even fewer understand the idea of ergodicity and how it impacts their wealth path in a game of incomplete information like trading. In this video, we're going to talk about ergodicity for quant trading and trading in general. We're going to talk about this idea of edge or expected value, this idea of non-stationarity and how your edge is going to change over time. Then we will talk about the idea of ergodic and non-ergodic systems, additive and multiplicative systems as an example of this, the difference between the time and the ensemble average. Then we will look to optimizing for the time average in a multiplicative system, which is what we face in reality. This will then yield an optimal bet size that we will have to adjust in practice. Though your edge is uncertain, your access to my Jupyter Notebooks never is. I will leave a link to this Jupyter Notebook in the description below. I will also post it to the Quant Guild Library on GitHub, where you can find all of my Jupyter Notebooks and associated YouTube videos, along with all of the source code for my Quant builds. At the top of this Jupyter Notebook, you'll notice some related Quant Guild videos applying probability and statistics to finance and trading. This idea of time series analysis, retail versus institutional trading, trading versus investing, this idea of accumulating expected value over time, particularly relevant to this idea of ergodicity, quant versus discretionary trading, and of course, busting three trading myths that these trading gurus love to propagate. If you're unfamiliar with any of these ideas, I highly recommend you check these videos out first before tackling one like this. Moreover, these videos certainly take a lot of effort to create. So if you'd like to help support the channel so I can continue to create videos just like this one, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It helps me out tremendously. It is always greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to master your quantitative skills for trading and market making roles, check out quantguild.com. We have over 90 quant lessons, an adaptive practice engine that scales with your skill level, interview questions with fully worked solutions, courses from A to Z in probability and statistics, coding, math with more on the way, and all that's included with Quant Guild membership, and you can get started for free. So if you'd like to help support the channel and master your quantitative skills, check out quantguild.com. Let's get started by talking about this idea of expected value or edge in the context of quant trading. Given a trading strategy tau, this could be some form of a composite alpha, maybe you have a market neutral strategy, you're trading some sort of indicator. In any case, you are going to have an average trade value, whether it is positive or negative, will dictate whether or not you're going to be accumulating wealth over time or losing it. We can decompose that expected value or edge into the average winner times the probability we win plus the average loser times the probability that we lose. We could do a lot here to optimize our expected value. We can increase the probability we win or our average winner, or we could decrease the probability that we lose or our average loser. In any case, if we have positive edge, positive expected value, we're going to be accumulating wealth over a series of trades. If we have negative edge or negative expected value, we are going to be losing wealth over a series of trades. Now, it's very important to understand that here, what we're looking at is a simulation given a fixed edge. If we're looking at a game of chance, you can think of casino games, roulette, craps, so on and so forth. The distributions don't change over time. Casino games are just one example of stationary distributions. Probability, statistics, and distributions are going to converge in the frequentist sense. The edge is never going to change. These are games of chance. This is gambling. There's nothing that players can do to influence their edge. However, in games of incomplete information, games of uncertainty with non-stationary distributions, things like poker, trading, edge and components of edge are going to change over time. And players and their optimal actions are going to dictate their edge and trajectory of their wealth path over time. What I have here is an animation showing this idea. On the left here, you can see positive expected value, this positive edge, and on the right, a negative edge. But what you'll notice underneath is the expected value, the edge is going to change over time. 
Sometimes it's more positive. Sometimes it's more negative. We don't actually get to see the true expected value at any point in time. And it's our objective to proxy for this, bet more when EV is higher, our edge is higher, bet less or not at all when it is lower or negative. But how much should we bet? Keep in mind, whether we're dealing with a game of chance or a game of uncertainty, you can think of our casino games or poker and trading, we don't get to dictate which sample path we walk. There's a component of randomness to it, but we want our sample path to be tracking a theoretical trajectory that is positive. That's how we can ensure we're going to accumulate wealth over time rather than lose it. So how much should we bet? Well, this turns into a really important problem of additive versus multiplicative betting. In general, if I have a thousand bucks and I'm betting in $10 increments, when I have a million bucks, am I going to bet in $10 increments? Well, no, I'm going to want to bet more money. And that naturally is this notion of multiplicative betting. Our betting is going to scale with our bank roll. Now, this turns into a problem. What I have here is two strategies that have positive expected value, but on the left, I'm dealing with that additive betting, fixed $10 increments. On the right here, I'm dealing with betting that is proportional to my bank roll. They look nothing alike. And this is the idea of ergodicity. On the left, I'm dealing with an ergodic system. On the right, a non-ergodic system. This is a big problem because we don't get to choose the sample path that we walk. Only a few of these sample paths on the right here actually accumulate wealth in an environment that has positive expected value while everyone else goes bankrupt, where in the additive environment, you can see that everyone is tracking that theoretical edge line pretty well. This is the idea that the time average is not equal to the ensemble average. In other words, the experience of the many isn't the experience of the few. What are we going to do to combat this? We are going to optimize for the time average of our wealth. This yields this maximization problem and the solution is the Kelly criterion. Now what I'm going to do is instead of betting with that fixed proportion to my bankroll as I did before, I'm going to be using the Kelly criterion. And as you can see, this certainly looks much better. And this is the idea of the Kelly criterion. We are going to be operating still with that variable bet sizing just in an intentional and optimal way that better resembles this idea of the ensemble average being equivalent to the time average. Now we're not making a non-ergodic system ergodic. However, we are improving the overall experience of the ensemble. In other words, we are going to be operating in a non-ergodic environment and we don't get to choose the sample path that we walk. So if I ran this simulation here and I ran this simulation here, which one would you like to walk a random sample path of? Well, here only two end with wealth above their initial values, but down here, significantly more do. This is the benefit of using something like the Kelly criterion. Now, in practice, in reality, our edge, as I mentioned earlier, isn't fixed. Components of our edge, the average winner, the average loser, the probability we win, the probability we lose, is going to change over time and full Kelly that is just using the solution to that maximization problem is going to be overly aggressive. What I have here is an example of using full Kelly relative to using half Kelly. This is the idea of just scaling down the optimal bet sizing for optimal compound growth. And what you're observing here is the true edge is going to change over time. It's going to be more positive and more negative in certain places. If we go full Kelly, look at the actual simulated PNL here. The ensemble average is negative relative to the initial investment. But using half Kelly, we're not overexposing ourselves when edge is arbitrarily lower. Now, we don't get to actually dictate when our edge is positive or negative, we're always going to be reactive. We're going to be proxying our edge using some historical data or model. Knowing this, we need to adjust our bet sizing accordingly. We can't just go full Kelly all the time. Too long didn't watch. Here's your executive summary. Edge is our wealth path trajectory over time. In a game of chance, something like roulette, this is fixed and constant. There's nothing you can do to influence that trajectory. In a game of incomplete information, poker or trading, your optimal action will dictate that trajectory. Now, in reality, due to the nature of those games, 
that trajectory is not going to be constant. And bet sizing is going to influence your ability to track that theoretical trajectory. This is the difference between an ergodic and a non-ergodic system. If you have positive expected value in an ergodic system, something with additive betting, the ensemble average will equal the time average. The experience of one will converge to the experience of many. In a non-ergodic system, the experience of the many is not the experience of the few. And that is the important distinction here. You can have positive expected value with almost every wealth path going to zero, except a few. Now we optimize for this and we get the Kelly criterion. In practice, full Kelly is too aggressive. We don't actually know our edge. That is a really important idea. We're always going to be proxying for it from a model or data. And in order to be more conservative and to improve the compounding of our wealth over time, we use variations of it. For example, half Kelly. Some future topics, technical videos, and other discussions to look forward to. Projects that made me a quant, my first year as a quant, why hedge funds are actually secretive. If there's interest in these more qualitative topics, please let me know in the comments below. It helps me figure out what videos to create next. And if there's an interest in that type of comment, I will get back to longer form technical lectures with the Kalman filter, Poisson processes, non-Markovian models, so on and so forth. And if there's interest, I would like to do more deep dives into current streams of academic literature, rough path theory, sig vol models, calibration and pricing. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. And I haven't forgotten about our quant builds. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you'd like to get started with interactive brokers, I highly recommend them and their API. I've been using them for over 10 years. I have this idea of how to backtest a trading strategy with interactive brokers, kind of an A to Z tutorial. So if there's interest in something like that, certainly let me know. Otherwise, that's gonna do it for this video on ergodicity for quant trading. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. This video certainly took a tremendous effort to put together. So if you enjoyed it and you wanna see more like it in the future, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Again, it is always greatly appreciated. I'll leave a link to my Discord server in the description below. If you'd like to connect with me and other quants in the Quant Guild community, check out quantguild.com to master your quantitative skills for trading and market making roles. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.